about the overall functionality of uh, some even uh, science and civil society. Cheap cleanup robot called Pro uh, Science and Civil Society to address. In 2010, he was an engineer at Opinion Column about the experiment alongside that review. Find both of those at nature.com slash nature. The websites have names like Kickstarter, Rocket Hub and SciFlies. They're platforms for the growing number of scientists who are turning to crowdfunding to finance their research. Take Cesar Harada. In 2010, he was an engineer at MIT, working on technologies to clear up oil spills. In April that year, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig blew up and oil started gushing into the Gulf of Mexico. It was an urgent problem, but, as Harada saw it, the lab wasn't equipped to find low-cost solutions quickly enough. So he quit MIT and moved to New Orleans, where he crashed on people's couches and ploughed his savings into a new project to design and build a cheap clean-up robot called Prote. His own money wasn't enough to finance the project alone, so he asked the public. He managed to crowdsource thousands of dollars, and he spent a bit of his own cash on a bus fare to the podcast studio today to share his story. Cesar, tell us a little bit about your project then. What exactly were you crowdsourcing money for? The project is to develop a technology to collect the oil spill using the wind power. An oil spill is a man-made catastrophe, but the way it moves is entirely up to natural you know, patterns like currents and waves and winds. And so we're using this power to collect the oil spill. So we are using the power of nature to collect a man-made problem. It's also a drone, so it's not exposing the health of workers. And the physics of the boat is completely new because it's a boat that doesn't have a rudder nor a center board, but the whole boat changes shape when it sails. So it's a groundbreaking sailing technology for an environmental purpose. And how is it all going so far? When did you start and uh, how has it been going? I started working on Prote right after I left uh, MIT. So I used to work in MIT in Boston. And um, I, I moved in the Gulf of Mexico, New Orleans, in July 2010. So the OSP was still happening. And that's when I started Prote as an independent researcher. MIT is a pretty good place to be if you're a scientist. Why didn't you ask them for some money? The thing is that MIT is very good and we probably get funded. But then the technology we develop is not sometimes, uh, what I would say, appropriate. If you are in a big institution, not specifically about MIT, you get certain um, time frames in which you have to develop technology, which are long because they are about like a, an academic year cycle. And then you have lots of money, so you develop expensive technology. And oftentimes you disconnect it from the ground. Now, the time frame is quite unusual, as you said. I mean, you had to react very quickly to the yeah. oil spill happening. But the way you went about getting funding is also quite unusual. Can you tell us a bit about how you managed to fund this project? Sure. So I went from having a nice salary and, you know, like living nicely in a very cozy city, very far from my subject, to living in New Orleans and couch surfing and keeping all the money I saved to invest in the project. And so I started fabricating the first prototypes. But quickly I ran out of uh, funds and I knew that there was another way of funding research and I know that I had to find money really quickly for a problem that was ongoing. So then I decided to check the kind of crowd validation of the technology. The wisdom of crowds. Yeah, would the people, people in the Gulf of Mexico and like just the internet community would decide if this technology is worth developing. And the crowd went for it to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. so we collected $33,000 and we had donations from more than 330 people from all continents. And um, so we fundraised this in three months. By the time we got funded, the OSP was capped, but we already had three prototypes which are working. So since we've, we've, we've gone a long way and we've been building more prototypes and now we are looking for the second year of funding. And so the scientific results then, I mean, how are these prototypes working? Have they actually helped clear any oil off the <laughs> Gulf of Mexico yet? So in the Gulf of Mexico, most of the oil has disappeared from the surface. So the machine that we are developing has not yet collected oil, but we're not worried about the fact that we need the techno this technology fast. Uh, shortly after the oil in the Gulf of Mexico, we had another one in China, in Dalian. Then we had another one in New Zealand recently. 
Then we had another one uh, just a few weeks ago off the coast of uh, Brazil. Ospias are going to, like large ospias are, are going to happen. And there are many other things that we can, uh, we can study. Some might say that the danger of these kind of crowdsourced you know, funding projects is that bad quality science could just get through because what does mm. the crowd know? I mean, they're yeah. not scientists. What would you say to that? I would say this is the assumption that science is superior to the rest of society. And I think that's an assumption which, which would lead to very detrimental consequences. And being funded in a transparent way, to me, seems to be an, rather an advantage rather than a disadvantage. 75, about 75% of the research being uh, performed right now in the Gulf of Mexico by the OSPIL is financed by BP. I think you can question, you know, the, the result of this research um, more than independently funded research. So I think it's actually an advantage. And so you'd recommend to other scientists and engineers to try and crowdsource some funding for their own projects? I think it's for multiple reasons. Um, the main reason I can see here is that today I don't think it's enough to develop only a technology. When you develop technology, you want to build a user base around it. So it's, it's just how do you create this ecosystem in which your technology gets verified faster and fails faster? I think it's a question of um, really like being humble. Like myself, I don't have a scientific background. And so I don't consider myself only competing into the scientific world. If you're a scientist and you consider your uh, technology or, or the research you're doing may have implications in the society, I think it's a good idea to get involved into in society, with society as soon as you can in the process. <laughs>